I would give uh, two lectures today. I think the first part will be about water demand, that is how much water we need, what we need it for. And the other one, part is uh, water supply systems. And then we have a break, and after that I'll talk about drinking water treatment. So first we can uh, ask, why is it actually we want to improve the water supply? And what is, uh, what is what kind of improvement? So closer water, and that was with the purpose of uh, getting more time available for other things. Also to get more water in the household. We need more water for, for washing hands, for um, washing any, any hygiene, for bathing and, and so on. And then we need also cleaner water, and that has some uh, health implications to make uh, cleaner water. And then it was also mentioned uh, more water for production. Uh, if we look back at the F diagram, um, from uh, that uh, also has been shown when we talked about health and sanitation, you can see we have. Uh, this is showing how, especially diarrhea, is spreading uh, from feces and to other people over there. Um, you can see it goes through different, uh, through the water, through the fields, through the flies, with the fingers, and so on. And there are certain ways to break this, as we have seen before. Sanitation can break some, water quality can uh, break some lines, water quantity, hand washing can break uh, some lines here. And um, as we see, the most, say, the first uh, barrier is the sanitation. First of all, to, to keep the pieces uh, away from um, away from from people put it into a hole uh, and the second one most important here is the hand washing uh, because sanitation will will stop break many of the uh, roots here but uh, not with the fingers and this is where the, the hand washing uh, comes in but with this we also um, we have some extra things we want to uh, we need to some extra barriers. One is the water quality, so even if we happen to uh, pollute the drinking water, we can we can uh, clean it here by make some uh, drinking water treatment or protection of the water. Uh, and if we want uh, hand washing, uh, we also need water. So it's these two, this, these lectures here will uh, deal with water quantity and uh, water quality, and it's the second part here. If we start looking at, we're focusing on the domestic water supply. We don't talk much about the irrigation uh, of, of fields and, and so on. We're focusing on the health uh, part of uh, this. So domestic water demand, what do we need water for? What is? What do we need most water for? I'll show you here one investigation from two different places where they tried to look in detail what did uh, households use their water for. And they looked at drinking, they looked at cooking, washing food and utensils, bathing, ritual washing uh, like you do before you go to the mosque, uh, washing clothes and, and other things here. So they looked at uh, four different cases, two of them, uh, the red and the, the blue one, uh, was from Mozambique where people had to walk very long distances. I think in, in, in the one, the red one in Tanda here, they had to walk almost 10 kilometers to get their water. And the two other places was in Sudan, where they were actually buying water from it, but it was a slum area, so they also limited. I mean, it's places where, where the water uh, consumption is quite limited compared to Denmark. So first of all, we see here, the, the, the highest is definitely bathing. If you're using very little water, then bathing would be the highest one. And it looks like washing clothes uh, also comes um, also comes uh, higher than this one. And, and the fifth one, I forgot that, is uh, from uh, Bangladesh. Um, I don't remember exactly the, the setting there. But we can see things like bathing, washing clothes, uh, comes higher than drinking, uh, drinking and cooking. But we can see the total consumption here, very different. If we look at the very worst situation where they had to walk almost 10 kilometers, the total consumption is only 5 liters per day, which is not even covering what we used to say for cooking and, and, and drinking. The 5 liters that you mentioned there is, is a number that is usually said, this is for cooking and drinking for, for everyone. 
but here they're really, really saving a lot of water because they have to walk so far. They're probably doing their bathing at the water pump, and that may, that may not be counted. Uh, while in uh, in Sudan here, where they're buying their water, the consumption is more like 20, 25. And this is a very common figure. If you have to carry the water home, if it's not too far away, you would often see that the consumption ends up in, in 20, 25 liters per per day here. There's some general uh, guidelines on uh, demand here. First, first, I mean, when you install, when you make a water project, what, what is it? What are the um, what are the guidelines for for installing water supply here? First of all, you say people should walk maximum 500 meters to get their water. Otherwise, you start spending so many so much time. So getting it within 500 meters. Uh, when you establish a water point, that could be a hand pump or a uh, tap, it should be at least one per 250 people, otherwise the lines of people would be uh, very high. And then the consumption. This is uh, a bit disputed, you could say, but but typically if people have to carry it home, I would say they, you seldom see that they use more than 25 liters per capita per day. If you think of it, 25 liters per capita. If you're a household with uh, 20, with five people, 25 liters would be 125 liters per day. That maybe the woman, the 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 um, the woman in the family, maybe with the help of a child or something, has to carry home 125 liters. How many buckets is that? That is a bucket of 15, so it would be seven, maybe eight eight buckets per day. So if you have to walk every time ten minutes, eight times, it's quite quite a lot of work. And that is uh, even just to get 25 liters per person in the household. Then you say drinking and cooking, typically five liters uh, per person per day. This is a very general number. Uh, but we have made some investigations in, in India and West Bengal where it turns out that they are actually using more than five liters. I don't know if it has to do with the way they're cooking or, or what, but they're using more like 10 liters per person here. And if you look at some general uh, experiences here, water carried in buckets home between five and 40 liters per capita per day. If you have a yard connection, that means you have one tap. This is many places, the, first, the next step when you start having water installed in houses, you put a tap in the yard, but not a lot of taps inside the house. Then you would be using 20 to 80 liters per capita. And if you have multiple taps, if you have a showers, if you have kitchen water, if you have uh, toilet water and all that, then you come up to 70 to 250. In Denmark, we have done a lot to reduce the water uh, supply by different technical means and by campaigns and so on. So we're down to 100. But if you look at other countries in Eastern Europe, where there's, the systems are, are, are maybe broken and so on. You very often find 200, 250 people are using a lot for car washing and so on. Good. So that was uh, about the water. It depends very much on the setting, how your water supply is, the, the demand. So where can we get the water? If we look at the uh, situation here, where we have a family living here in a house. Where would they be able to, what kind of water could we find here? What water sources do they have? Groundwater. We could have some groundwater here. We could have some rainwater. That could be a river running here. That could be a lake over here. Snow. Maybe there's some melting ice in the mountains, there would be snow. Kilimanjaro is this uh, mountain here. Spring. Yes. Spring is uh, is like groundwater in the in the mountains where it where it comes out here at the spring, the water. Um, and when we say groundwater we can we can talk about different uh, layers of uh, groundwater here. So there would be uh, different ways to pick up this water. You could make a dug well. Oh, no. If you're looking at dug wells, 
we will be looking at the surface water here, the the top, sorry, the top aquifer here, where um, where the water is not under pressure. Bowels, yeah. That could be. We want to go for the deep uh, water here, so we drill a borehole. Borehole is very smaller, like ten centimeters, fifteen max. Uh, while a dove well is about one meter here. Uh, deep aquifers could be under pressure. So as soon as you you bore into this, you will see that the water is rising by itself uh, to some to some level here because the the, the water is is coming from from the mountain, so the, somehow it's, it's been falling on a place where it was a higher ground. So the difference in um, in pressure means that it can it can go up to to, to some level. Housing rainwater, yeah, on the roof maybe. Yeah. Bucket to get from the river, from the river, in the ice maybe, or from the river. Yeah. And then you can put the spring here into some pipes that you can leak. Attack. All right, these are the water supply systems that we're going to look at. 